The fierce and long single, big sister suddenly woke up to find an extremely cool and dashing husband. Handsome, with a perfect figure, whether this husband was real or fake, she still had to passionately embrace and kiss him before figuring things out. Because she had lost her memory, when she opened her eyes, she was in a daze, shocked to realize she was lying in a hospital. Furthermore, her face was seriously injured, but her mind was blank, unable to remember anything. She was particularly sensitive to the noises around her. Even the slightest sounds outside the hospital room, she could hear them clearly. Suddenly, the hospital room door opened. A hail of bullets flew towards her. Her mind barely reacting, but her body instinctively dodged the bullets. One bullet hit the water jug nearby, as a figure in black wearing a mask and carrying a gun stepped into the hospital room. Seeing no body on the hospital bed, he cautiously looked around. At that moment, the girl swiftly brandished a sharp-colored knife, silently lunging towards the person in black. The knife swung up, and someone was killed by her. She grew even more suspicious, wondering who she really was. How did she possess such sharp skills? Meanwhile, someone rushed into the hospital to assassinate her, and in her confusion, a gun barrel suddenly pressed against her head. It turned out there was still another person in black. The voice of the person in black echoed. I didn't expect you to have this day. Now, the reward is only mine. The girl tensed her nerves, realizing that she was probably going to die today. So she wanted to know who she really was before she died. But the person in black was wary of her strength and didn't want to waste time, only wanting to resolve the situation quickly. Suddenly, there was a loud thud, but she felt no pain. She turned around in astonishment, only to find that the person lying dead was the man in black. Would you let an amateur like this hold a gun to your head? It seems like you're seriously injured this time, the man's mocking voice echoed. He stood at the door, gun in hand, his handsome face exuding a strong aura. Even his black vest couldn't conceal it. He looks like a lone predator in the darkness. She thought to herself, observing the man's rugged appearance. Despite his imposing presence, she couldn't recall who he was. After a moment of silence, a mischievous glint flickered in his deep, dark eyes. With a smirk, he declared, I'm your husband. The girl gasped in astonishment, unable to believe she had such a ruggedly handsome husband. His lips were sensuous, his features sharp as a knife, and his physique was chiseled, with a shirt stretched to the brink of tearing. Just the thought of it hinted at the muscular frame underneath. She rushed into his arms at the speed of light. She seized the opportunity to brush against his chest, confirming that it was indeed as firm as she had imagined. This action left the typically composed man flustered, unsure of where to place his hands and feet. Hey, hey, do you really believe that I'm your husband? She teased, flashing a sweet smile. Cheerfully, she continued calling out to him without hesitation. She may have lost her memory, but she wasn't naive. Who would doubt a man with a gun in hand? Moreover, the recent skirmish had depleted much of her already weakened body strength. She could only endure for a brief moment before succumbing to exhaustion. Moments later, she collapsed unconscious. Fortunately, the young man caught her just in time. Cradling her in his arms. Before slipping into unconsciousness, she whispered softly to herself. Husband, save me, I'll obediently listen to you, she murmured weakly. The young man's heart felt incredibly complex. Uncertain, he asked again, are you really going to be obedient? She was a fierce, independent girl, proud and unyielding. A girl who's always been alone, now saying she'll obediently listen, thought the young man, desperate yet holding on to a glimmer of hope. If that's the case, it's better not to let her know anything at all, the next morning, she woke up to find a muscular husband with eighteen pack abs dressed elegantly leaning against the bed beside her. Like a patient predator waiting for its beautiful prey. His presence was commanding. Her face immediately flushed red as she wondered if it was a good idea to wake up like this. However, she couldn't help but doubt, almost out of habit. 
Was this man really her husband? She keenly observed the man's eyes and immediately broke into a delighted smile. Oh, my dear husband. Good morning, she greeted him. The man nodded in satisfaction. Suddenly, he leaned in closer and gently asked her, Have you remembered anything? As she spoke, his eyes were intensely focused, observing every subtle expression on her face. In truth, she didn't need to hide anything because she couldn't even remember her own name. Hearing her words, he couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. Her eyes softened ever so slightly, revealing a hidden tenderness. He carefully lifted her face. Just remember me. Tinda is your husband, he whispered softly. The closeness caused Titch Dain's face to flush with embarrassment. But she couldn't understand why her heart resisted these words. Tinda seemed to be aware of this, so he quickly added, asking her, Do you really despise this ordinary husband of yours? Titch Dain shook her head. Suddenly, she felt intense pain and screamed out loud. Because Titch Dain's wound from yesterday had reopened, Tind accidentally touched it. She was about to call the doctor when he stopped her, saying they'd have to wait a long time for the doctor to arrive. He believed he could handle the wound himself. Saying this, Tinda gently removed her nightgown. Simultaneously, using a low, mesmerizing tone of voice, he reassured her, Don't worry, we're husband and wife. Every inch of your body, I know as well as the palm of my hand. Even the tattoo on your back. His movements were both natural and skillful. Suddenly, there was a cold, abrupt kiss landing on her sensitive neck. It was a mixture of biting and nibbling, rough yet urgent. His tongue suddenly traced the curve of her arm. In a low voice, he asked, Have you remembered anything yet? He spoke while tilting his head, looking at her flushed face. The young man's sparkling eyes met hers directly. Instantly, her mind became alert. It turns out this person was trying to probe whether she had lost her memory for real. She decided to play along with him to understand the true relationship between them. The only problem was she was currently wearing nothing, feeling extremely embarrassed under his gaze. Therefore, she anxiously urged him to quickly attend to the wound. Tin Da didn't listen and instead scolded her. After tending to the wound, Tin Da still wasn't at ease. He carefully checked the wound on her head. She noticed a warm, friendly smile on his face. She could clearly feel that this husband, whether real or fake, had no ill intentions towards her. However, she couldn't let her guard down completely. So, the big sister lost her mind. A gang leader claimed to be her husband. The two began to engage in a battle of wits and courage. The girl woke up. She now had a handsome, muscular husband to help apply the medicine. She hesitated for only 0.01 seconds. She was simply mesmerized by his muscular physique. I'm truly sorry. Despite his good looks, he couldn't sway the girl's rational judgment. She may have lost her memories, but she hadn't lost her intelligence. With a simple gesture of inquiry, a mere glance, she could determine with 100% certainty that this husband was fake. He could even be her enemy from before she lost her memory. This morning, at the dining table, Tin Da fed her with a natural and gentle touch. Meanwhile, Titch Dain remained very observant, noticing two peculiar points. Firstly, Tin Da's knife was made of durable stainless steel with lethal potential. On the other hand, her knife was just an ordinary plastic one. More than half of TNHDA's subordinates' eyes were fixed on her, both wary and full of hostility. So she made a bold decision. Suddenly, she leaped forward. At the moment her fingers touched his knife, TNHDA's expression turned icy. His subordinates swiftly moved closer, ready with their guns. With a stern expression, as if to warn her that if she dared to do anything dangerous, even if she hadn't regained her memories, she would perish right there. She then returned to her place, pretending to be cute and affectionate. Darling, I just want to borrow your knife to cut some meat, that's all. Is that okay? 
she wore a sweet smile, unusually different. Her voice was teasing in a way he had never imagined. Tin Dia seemed a bit clueless, slowly walking towards her. I'm sorry, my love. I was too careless, he apologized. You should help me cut the meat first, she suggested. He was clearly cautious around her, yet pretended to be a gentle and considerate husband. Now she could be certain. This man was just a pretend husband, possibly even an adversary. Keeping me alive must be because they want something, she thought to herself. Suddenly, there was a loud explosion. Tin Dia immediately held the girl tightly in his arms. Titch Dain seized the opportunity and quickly grabbed a sharp knife. His subordinates stood outside to protect their boss. The boss stayed behind the door to protect the beautiful lady. In a low voice, he comforted her, saying that as long as he lived another day, no one would harm her. Titch Dain weakly nestled into Tianh Da's embrace. The beautiful eyes of the girl now concealed a deadly intent. Now all she needed to do was kill him and take advantage of the chaos to escape. Just then, there was another loud explosion. Shattered glass flew in all directions, heading towards the two huddled figures. Without hesitation, Tin Die acted. He quickly turned, using his body to shield Titch Dain from the sharp glass shards. Fresh blood immediately stained Tsh Dain's hands red. She was astonished, her suspicions deepening. Why would the enemy risk their life to protect her? She had no idea it was all because of a single sentence she had uttered. Husband, save me. I'll obediently listen to you. She pleaded. These words, which had already left the young man desperate, ignited a faint ray of hope within him. Because of this sentence, Tin Da raised his gun, aiming at the figure in black who intended to harm Tich Daim. However, the figure in black didn't stop, and he was wounded in the arm. Indeed, even if Tin Da died in his hands, he wouldn't feel ashamed. He threw a cold, piercing gaze at the figure in black as if he deserved to be punished for targeting Titch Daim. She was indeed seriously injured. How could he allow such treachery to go unpunished? Shortly after, he ordered his subordinates to handle the black-clad figure however they saw fit. One subordinate named Luke Tu discovered Titch Daim lying unconscious on the ground. He was about to take action against this cruel woman to avenge his brothers when the boss intervened. He was told not to touch her. At that moment, Tin Da stood tall and imposing, his gaze intimidating. Luke Tu was not convinced. It was clear that many of their brothers had been harmed by this cruel woman. If they didn't seize this opportunity to take her life, she would eventually take theirs. Tin Da spoke again, his voice firm and determined. He emphasized each word. I've said it before. You are not to touch her. A husband adorned with a gold ring flaunted his muscles, applied ointment, fed breakfast. Endured humiliation in the rain of bombs and bullets, using tactics. This time, the girl reluctantly accepted it as well. But the school uniform, princess dress, and even these things, he told her that she had worn these items and gone through precious memories with him. It was impossible, absolutely impossible. After all, she still couldn't remember who she was. She wouldn't accept such humiliation, even if it meant risking her life. In fact, Titch Dain had long suspected that this person wasn't her husband but rather her enemy. However, she didn't expect that later on, when they encountered the attackers, Tin Da would bravely protect her despite the danger. This made her doubt whether he was indeed her true husband. Inside the room, there was tenderness. Outside, there was intense gunfire. Titch Dain, I know you're in there. Come out, shouted a girl with pink hair, brandishing an AK-47. Seeing no movement inside the house, she continued. Tong L.A. gracefully swayed, crazily firing bullets into the Nahates. Titch Dain, come out now. A bullet whizzed past T.I.C.H. Dain's ear, embedding itself into the door beside her. Immediately, she sensed that this bullet didn't seem ordinary. 
She calmly looked back, confirming that it was indeed a rubber bullet, incapable of killing. She immediately deduced that this ambush was also part of TNHDA's investigation. Fortunately, she hadn't acted earlier. Otherwise, she would have fallen into his trap. At that moment, three subordinates outside were desperately advising Tong L.A. to stop, their throats sore from shouting. Tin HDA subordinates had caught up, but Tong L.A. remained adamant. She wanted to wait. Just then, a real bullet suddenly whizzed past her hair. She couldn't retreat nor could she run. Reaching safety, she hadn't even regained her strength before she vented all her frustration onto her subordinates. You're all useless, she exclaimed. Second miss, why did we have to risk provoking Tin DA like that? Of course, it's to save our boss, she replied. Just let you guys stir up trouble, with TICH Dying's courage, it's guaranteed to be easy to handle. At this point, Tong LA became agitated again. If it weren't for you useless bunch, Titch Dain would have escaped by now, she remarked. I still remember clearly the first time I met Titch Dain. She was wearing 15 centimeter high heels, arrogantly stepping on the head of a man. Her flowing, bouncy hair exuded an elegant charm. Like a haughty queen, she exuded an air of arrogance. At that moment, she was deeply moved. She had never encountered such a dominant and proud girl before, who looked like a stunning sunflower. Her whole being radiated an irresistible allure. The man could only bow his head in submission to her. Her father married her off to clear his debt. I and my brothers just wanted to try her out. Titch Dain begged for mercy from me. Titch Dain laughed contemptuously. Bullying a weak girl, then begging for mercy from a stronger girl. He's just another coward who preys on the weak, she remarked. Her trembling hand was handed a gun. She took matters into her own hands to end her hellish nightmare. In that moment, she forced herself to learn how to become strong. Since then, Titch Dain was not only the boss, but also a saint in her heart. At this moment, her saint was playing the role of a meek and obedient wife, helping Tin D.A. treat his wounds. She accidentally glanced at the tattoo on his body. There was a scar in the location of the tattoo, very deep. She was taken aback, curious about this extraordinary and skillful man, who also had many loyal subordinates. From unwillingness to willingness, who else could have injured him? She innocently gazed intently at the tattoo. Tin HDA's eyes subtly narrowed as he observed her. Then he casually asked, what are you looking at so intently? Titch Dain startled, quickly stroked him and said, I'm admiring my husband's perfect figure. Tin HDA's mouth corner twitched as soon as he heard. If that's the case, then help me change clothes, you might enjoy even more. Titch Dain didn't refuse, who said his figure was too handsome. She could even take the opportunity to enter the dressing room to find clues, proving whether they were really husband and wife or not. She froze when she saw the outfits. School uniforms, Tin D.A. likes the innocent schoolgirl style, and even the princess dress. His taste is quite diverse. But what shocked her the most was the collection of sleepwear in the style of a big sister, barely there. Don't tell her that before she lost her memory, she wore these things to please her husband. Amidst the peculiar outfits, there was a pristine white t-shirt. She couldn't help but take a closer look at the other two items. At that moment, Tin D.A. suddenly looked at her with eager anticipation. Do you remember anything now? That outfit was our first meaningful one, he exclaimed. T.C.H.D.U.I.N. immediately broke out in a cold sweat. Silently cursing him to clarify. Which outfit? What first meaningful one? Don't take advantage of her memory loss to make her do strange things. The girl suddenly lost her memory, and her enemy became her husband. She couldn't refuse. Absolutely couldn't refuse. A tall, muscular guy with an 18-pack, yet he was like an adorable puppy, loving to cuddle and hug. Even though she had lost her memory, 
she dared to swear that this guy was definitely the most skilled underworld boss among all husbands. He's the most loyal little dog in all the underworld bosses. And he's also a loyal water dog who knows his body looks good so he never wears clothes. He even says some quirky things to her, those outfits all have memorable memories for them. Titch Dain broke out in cold sweat, looking bewildered and not understanding anything. Tin HDA's heart sank, her face becoming deeply saddened. Her lonely gaze fell on the pristine white t-shirt. It was the shirt he cherished. Fourteen years, sixty-six days, forty-eight hours. It was also the shirt Titch Dain once gave him. Even if he died, he wouldn't forget that day. That year, he was very reluctantly dragged by Titch Dain to work as a porter, with all sorts of stuff hanging all over him. He grumbled and sighed in frustration. Suddenly, Titch Dain pulled out a white t-shirt from her bag. Her eyes sparkled like stars. I bought this shirt for you, she said. Even though it's just a plain white t-shirt, it makes my heart feel like it's bouncing around. Despite grumbling outwardly, I'm not easily swayed. I won't be friends with you. But Titch Dain explained very seriously, I don't want to just be friends with you either. This shirt is just a token of my affection for you. From now on, you will be my husband, and I will be your wife. At that time, you were still naive and didn't understand anything about love. Hearing her say that made him blush with embarrassment. He felt like a cornered animal being asked to eat sugar cane, uh, 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 I don't need your shirt. Later, he took the shirt back without looking at her. He remembered her arrogant words vividly, yet he also deeply loved this strong girl. Suddenly, Titch Dain spoke up, bringing Tin D.A. back from his reverie to reality. It's because these outfits look so skimpy that you remembered them so well. Right? Before she finished her sentence, Tin D.A. blushed crimson and denied, No, it's not like that. What I fear most is being misunderstood by Titch Dain. Feeling embarrassed, he explained that he didn't often visit this place but it was very safe. So, he temporarily asked Ho Quan Trake to buy some women's clothes. He never expected him to buy these kinds of things. He felt bashful, which made her even more embarrassed, and involuntarily raised his hand to scratch his chin. Tin Da immediately noticed the bandage on her hand, so he worriedly held her hand to check. Suddenly pulled back, the distance between them shortened instantly. With deep, gentle eyes, Tin Da made Titch Dain blush intensely, her face turning as red as her ears. Tin Da smirked, actually, there's another way to help your wound heal faster. Tell me. He tried to control his racing heart. Placing a tender kiss on each of her fingers, he felt a tingling sensation like electric shocks. Each finger went straight to T.I.C.H. Dain's heart. Then her entire body felt enveloped in masculine warmth, strong and comforting. Even her fingertips felt soft and pliable. Just as Tin D.A. was getting excited, preparing to bite into the second piece, a subordinate suddenly rushed in, breathless. Doctors here, boss, he reported. The boss abruptly interrupted the good moment. Glaring at the subordinate with a deadly gaze. Shortly after, following a thorough examination, the doctor diagnosed Titch Dain with external injuries leading to memory loss. It could take six months to a year or two for her to recover her memory. But this period of time still seemed too long for Titch Dain. She wasn't sure if staying here would put her in danger. Furthermore, up until now, she still didn't know the true identity and purpose of Tin Da. After the examination, she stood silently by the window, gazing into the distance. Tin Da escorted the doctor to the door, whether it was the doctor's initiative or demanded by Tin Da, she didn't know. Seeing Tin Da holding an unlabeled bottle of medicine, she ran out to meet him to find out more. Curious, she asked, did the doctor say anything? Tin D.A. looked relaxed as he took out the unlabeled bottle of medicine. The doctor gave me this bottle, he said. He said this medicine will help improve brain function and restore memory. 
the single big sister suddenly found herself pressured by her husband to take an unlabeled medication. Clearly, over a decade ago, she had even bought a cheap shirt to try to impress him into marrying her. How did her husband turn into such a domineering underworld boss now? It seems like he intended to take advantage of her memory loss, just now, Tin HDA's gaze was profound. He held the unlabeled bottle of medicine, saying, this is the medicine to help you restore your memory. Be obedient and take your medicine. Obedient? Who does he think he's talking to? Titch Daim retorted. Just because I have memory loss doesn't mean I'm stupid. Darling, is this a dietary supplement? What's the name? Why doesn't it have a label? Titch Daim teased him with a carefree laugh, trying to probe him. Her eyes stared at him intently. Tin D.A. was taken aback, momentarily forgetting how to respond. Suddenly, a spark of interest lit up in his eyes as he leaned close to her ear, asking, Are you afraid this is poison? In just two brief seconds, he accurately guessed the suspicion in T.S.H. Dain's heart. She was startled. How could this man be so sharp? At that moment, every thought in T.I.C.H. Dain's mind was written on her face, a mixture of caution and horror. Yet, Tin D.A. couldn't help but find it endearing, and he chuckled softly. How could I bear to harm such a beautiful and lovely wife like you? Titch Daim raised an eyebrow, wondering what was so funny. But if you truly want to kill me, there's no need for these sneaky poisoning tactics. Unless you want to make yourself look like a fool. Who are you, really? What is your purpose? Titch Dain pondered intensely but couldn't remember anything. With no other options, she decided to retreat to her room for some rest. Later, she would seize the opportunity to continue her investigation. Returning to her room, she kept staring at the bottle of medicine Tin D.A. had placed on the bedside table but couldn't bring herself to drink it. Tin D.A. smiled indulgently, teasing, Do you want me to personally feed it to you? I said I would. Holding a pill between his teeth, he suddenly leaned in, pressing her down while his breath by her ear grew increasingly pronounced with his weight. Titch Dain felt her entire body stiffen. When in contact with him, she felt embarrassed and turned her face away, saying, I won't take the medicine. She seemed shy when interacting closely with Tin D.A., encountering T.S.H. Dain's cold and distant rejection, reminiscent of her attitude before she lost her memory, left him feeling distant. It was as if she wanted to push him away, never to meet again. He was shocked and wide-eyed. Suddenly, he seemed to go mad, using one hand to restrain both of her arms, forcing Titch Dain to take the pill. Despite the distance of one meter, ten decimeters, one hundred centimeters, one thousand millimeters, he refused to accept it. They were husband and wife. The closest people in the world with no distance between them. When he heard T.I.C.H. Dain's painful cry as the wound in her mouth reopened, he suddenly realized he had been too hot-headed just now. So, he got up, transforming into a remorseful puppy, looking pitifully and pleadingly for his wife's forgiveness. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I got too carried away. Are you still in pain? Titch Dain shook her head, her face flushed. After he left, she gently placed her hand on her lips, lost in thought. Tin D.A. didn't immediately leave but stood outside the door, blaming himself as if being punished. In his heart, he silently repeated the apology a hundred times. He received a call from Hope Quan Trake, which infuriated him. He firmly believed there was nothing wrong with that bottle of medicine. She used to be a tough and independent woman. But due to an incident leading to memory loss, she turned into a vulnerable lamb. But the bodyguards remained vigilant around her, not daring to let their guard down. If she even stood up, the whole team of bodyguards would point their guns at her face. Don't worry, I'm just going to the bathroom, she reassured them. Knowing that Titch Dain had been saved by Tin D.A., the leader of the blackshirt men went berserk. You guys are useless. The black shirt leader. Wanting to redeem himself, arranged for his men to infiltrate Tin H.D.A.'s villa. 
they sought an opportunity to deal with Titch Dain. You'd better act quickly and get rid of her, he instructed them, emphasizing the urgency of the matter. In that case, the Chu Thuoc Duong gang would certainly seek revenge on Tin Die. We can't just sit idly by. As for Titch Dain, after being injured, she rested for a week at Tin HDA's villa. She felt very trapped. Since Tin Da was at the office, he arranged a group of tall, burly bodyguards to protect her. They always stared at her intensely, which added to her pressure. Whenever she tried to stand up even a little, the bodyguards behind her would tense up like strings and all of them would point their guns at her. You don't need to worry, I'm just going to the bathroom, she assured them. Then, she wouldn't be scrutinized by ten pairs of eyes. She could only find peace and quiet to contemplate in the restroom. She felt the air was stiff and tense, filled with a menacing aura. Therefore, she decided to figure out a way to establish a good relationship with them. As soon as she stepped out, she saw the bald bodyguard holding a knife. My last sister-in-law is finally here. I'll show you how powerful I am, he exclaimed. Overwhelmed with fear, she screamed loudly. The bald bodyguard then showcased his unique skill, transforming an apple peel into a flower. This performance made her burst into tears and laughter. Is there any more apple left? I want to learn too, she asked, trying to lighten the mood. A few minutes later, the table was filled with apple flowers. The sister-in-law displayed impressive knife skills. The bald bodyguard carefully offered a glass of rose tea to her. Being in the same profession, she knew there must be something wrong with this tea. So she declined the hot tea politely, citing that she preferred not to drink anything too hot. Titch Dain wasn't sure if the person who brewed the tea had an issue or if things here were just too complicated. But one thing was certain, this wasn't Tin HDA's directive. After all, he wouldn't want to create unnecessary trouble like this. The fruit carving knife was made of plastic so it was evident that someone else in the room wanted to harm her. Moreover, the person who wanted to harm her seemed to be quite afraid of her. In that case, she needed to be patient, play cat and mouse with them for a while. Tong L.A. found Hoke Quan Trake pleasing to the eye. He was loyal to Tin D.A. and had good professional skills but lacked strategic thinking. Her subordinate suggested that compared to Tin D.A., who was cunning and cautious, it would be better to deal with Hoke Quan Trake. In this situation, using the beauty trap may be a reasonable option. However, the final decision on who should go to carry out the mission depends on various factors. Including specific plans and characteristics of each target. I understand that you are willing to sacrifice everything for the boss, but if Hoke Quan Trake does not match your taste, assigning the task to someone else may be a sensible decision. At that moment, subordinates came to report that they had caught a doctor outside the villa. I heard that Tin Da introduced the boss as his wife and claimed that the boss had lost his mind. Indeed, this cunning fox Tin Da wants to tie the boss to himself. Now our boss is as naive as a lamb, very easy to be manipulated by him. Thinking about the scene where the boss, who is usually strong, has to endure humiliation, Tong L.A. decides to rescue the boss at all costs and bring she back quickly. The girl who used to be a gang leader, commanding authority and respect, lost her memory and became as innocent as a lamb. When the news reached her subordinates that the boss had been captured by the rival gang, they feared that she would be humiliated, so they quickly infiltrated the enemy's hideout. So Tong L.A. disguised himself as a bullied student right in front of the Tan Long gang's headquarters. Indeed, his plan worked and attracted the attention of Hoke Quan Trake. He rushed over to chase away the bully. Tong L.A. put on a pitiful look and begged him, Can you please take me home? At this moment, her boss, though suffering from amnesia, still had a sharp mind. To find the person who poisoned her. She waited for the tea to cool down while the culprit remained inactive. The bald-headed bodyguard behind her reminded her, tea must be consumed while it's still hot. Indeed, the person serving the tea and adding the drug was him. Unbeknownst to her, 
he was concerned about his favorite tea leaves, so he asked for permission to drink first. Titch Dain swung his arm and landed a punch on his face. The bald-headed bodyguard looked at the tea cup he held as if it had shattered into pieces, feeling a sharp pain in his heart and a burning resentment. It was as if he wanted to return to his grandparents' place. Indeed, there was no gain from his actions. It seems that the person serving the tea didn't intend to harm her. He genuinely wanted to drink the tea. Unexpectedly, the poisoner was so careful. It seems we have to wait for him to act again. Unexpectedly, the man in black appeared. Tin D.A. was currently at the headquarters meeting with Boss Lu of the Chilin Trading Association. He invited Tin D.A. over as there were many new girls at the tavern and he wanted him to come as a guest. Tin D.A. declined the invitation because he had something to attend to tonight. Could it be that Boss Ko is a playboy, having a wife every night? At this moment, Tin D.A. received a phone call informing her that Titch Dain was in trouble, so she hurried home. Everything was part of Boss Lu's plan. This time, going to the headquarters was to personally witness TSH Dain's worried appearance. This is just the beginning of his plan. When he arrives home, he will discover that his beloved canary in his arms has been poisoned. He rushes back to the villa. Where is Titch Dain? He bursts open the door. Seeing her sitting there munching on popcorn, unharmed, does it disappoint him greatly? He feels relieved to see her unharmed. Titch Dain pats the bed. Come here, sit down. Tell me slowly, he says, the girl, unaware of her identity before losing her memory, but aware of her current status, begins, I am the unluckiest wife in the world. Her husband, in the middle of the night, holds a sharp knife to test her loyalty. She notices that his chest is even bigger than hers. The only thing worth celebrating is that her reflexes are still sharp. Because when the gun barrel was only 0.01 centimeters away from her throat, her rational mind told her to be afraid, but her body reacted with wide open eyes. The gunman's hand trembled and he didn't immediately fire the gun, showing that he was afraid of her. Seizing the opportunity in just 0.5 seconds, she swiftly dodged the bullet flying towards her. The sound of the bullet tearing through the air ignited a surge of adrenaline throughout her body, instantly igniting her with fervent excitement. It was a primal instinct, a rush of blood that surged from deep within her bones. Then she unleashed a 180-degree spinning kick, striking the towering masked assailant in the face, causing him to fall backward. At the same time, she swiftly stomped on his hand, sending the gun flying out of his grasp. She was about to lunge forward to grab the assailant when suddenly the other person threw a smoke bomb, enveloping her in a thick cloud of smoke. Frustrated, she couldn't see the face of the assailant, who had already fled. Tin D.A. listened quietly from beginning to end to everything that had happened. The expression on his face revealed deep thought. Then he joked again. So you still didn't see the face of the assailant who got away. What a shame. His words ignited a fierce fighting spirit in her, unwilling to submit, etched into her very bones, leaving only the words, I'm very angry, written all over her face. Tin D.A. looked straight into her eyes without apologizing or showing any tenderness. Instead, he gave a slight smile and bid farewell. Watching him stand up to leave, she immediately called out to him. What kind of husband would leave without offering any comfort to his wife who almost got shot? Tin D.A. instinctively turned back, his expression dark and mysterious. He took each step closer. The sound of his footsteps crushing T.S.H. Dain's heart. Suddenly, Titch Dain was pushed down onto the bed by him, his warm breath from his nose making her feel dizzy. Blushing, she demanded that he let her go. Tin D.A. responded with indifference, asking what would happen if he didn't let her go. Frustrated, she couldn't hold back and cursed at him, threatening to break his eggs. After cursing, she realized what she had just said and her face turned red as if it was about to bleed. Tin D.A. wasn't any better off. He also blushed and quickly sat up with the speed of light. During this time, although they were known as husband and wife, 
they still slept in separate rooms. At night, Tin Die silently sneaked into TICH Dain's room, holding a sharp knife, and asked in a low voice, Tich Dain, are you asleep? Seeing that the girl was fast asleep with no signs of waking up, the sharp knife slowly approached and touched TICH Dain's skin, the time seemed to stand still. Tin Die realized that she was indeed asleep. He silently whispered to himself, if she could be like this forever, it would be great. A terrifyingly crazed look flashed in the dark room. He waited until he could leave gently and quietly. Titch Dain was still sound asleep on the bed, only daring to breathe heavily when he was gone. Despite being able to handle ten men alone outside, he could still calmly help his boss at home. He bought various types of items, including Lolita-themed items. In short, all it took was to look beautiful and he would buy it. However, when he encountered a sweet and shy girl, the six-foot-tall, strong, and fierce young man also blushed. He was at a loss and didn't know what to do. Without speaking, no one would believe that this seemingly dull and foolish guy was actually the second young master of the Tan Long gang. Likewise, no one would believe that this gentle girl was also the second young mistress of the Chu Tuc gang, Tong L.A. To rescue Tich Dain, who has lost her memory, she decided to use the allure strategy on the wooden-headed guy. The truth proved that even when the wooden-headed guy was brought home, he was still a wooden-headed guy. Hoke Quan Trake nervously shook, sweating profusely. Tong L.A., dressed in a short dress, prepared hot tea and finished her makeup before stepping out. Hoke Quan Trake startled, his face turning red as he instinctively reached out his hand, stealing a quick glance before immediately lowering his head, unable to continue looking. Tong L.A. began to act out a pitifully frightened scene, crying and sobbing. She recounted how she still felt terrified until now. Hearing this, Hok Quan Trake hurriedly approached. Intending to pat her sweetly on the shoulder to comfort her a bit. But the moment his hand touched her skin, he suddenly stopped and immediately withdrew his hand. He scratched his head and fidgeted awkwardly, feeling embarrassed. Um, I'm sorry, I don't even know your name, he stammered. Completely oblivious, Hok Quan Trake failed to recognize Tong L.A.'s glaring frustration. Muttering a curse under her breath about his apparent pretense of ignorance, she wondered how long he could keep up the act. With that thought in mind, she placed her teacup down and intentionally sat closer to Hok Quan Trake. However, to her surprise, he swiftly moved away at the speed of light, avoiding her proximity. She could only restrain her anger and pretend to be distressed as she narrated the story of her named Tong Nhu. Living alone, Tong Nhu often faced harassment. There was one incident where, before she could finish her sentence, Hok Quan Trake erupted in anger like a burning firewood. Tong Nhu was followed all the way to her home by someone. Just a brief and concise statement managed to extinguish the flames of his anger. The wooden-headed man suddenly realized his earlier rashness and quickly regained his composure. He assured that such incidents would never happen again in the future. With a slightly flushed face and a hint of embarrassment mixed with a touch of reverence in his eyes. He saw that he had made a fool of himself. Tong L.A., realizing that he had made a blunder, gently stood up to go and fetch him a cup of hot tea. Pretending to be carefree and innocent, she turned her head with a sweet smile. Then, as expected, she playfully tripped. The wooden-headed man skillfully and swiftly flew out to catch her. In that moment of four eyes meeting, he blushed and asked, Um, are you okay? Tong L.A. remained silent, but in her heart, she was cursing loudly. Such a silly question. Of course I'm okay. How long were you planning to stare? I'm getting tired standing here. Despite her outward display of gentleness, she continued, it seems like my ankle is twisted. The wooden-headed man immediately turned into a silent piece of wood. After hesitating for a while, he gently lifted her up. Let me take you back to your room then. Tong L.A. obediently nodded on the surface, but internally, she felt triumphant. See that? Finally couldn't keep up the act anymore, the wolf's tail is showing. 
She was carefully placed on the bed by him, then she sat in a posture inviting him to join her. Tong L.A. was left sitting there with a puzzled expression on her face. Well, well, well. Why did he suddenly leave like that? What's going on? She couldn't help but wonder what had just happened and why he had rushed off like that. The next day, Hoke Quan Trake rushed to the villa to handle the case of T.S.H. Dain's assassination attempt. Although at that time Titch Dain did not see the face of the perpetrator, he could be certain that the culprit was among these bodyguards. At this moment, Titch Dain was also acting in various ways and so on. She stood next to the flower arrangement but, in reality, quietly observed the reactions of the crowd. After an hour passed without any leads on the perpetrator, Hoke Quan Trake couldn't help but exclaim, I've never seen the boss value any girl like this before, as everyone left. Titch Dain didn't let his curiosity show, but inwardly he wondered, hmm, does he notice any girl? Upon hearing her question, Hoke Quan Trake stuttered, his face turning red, as if he was thinking about someone. Titch Duong noticed the strange reaction but didn't expose it, instead steering the conversation to inquire about the relationship between her and Tin Da. Asking for example about their feelings and whether any unpleasant incidents had occurred. Hoke Quan Trake foolishly remained silent for a while before slowly responding. She and our boss once had a very beautiful relationship, so strong that it could be said to be unbreakable. But then she deeply hurt our boss because she betrayed him. Titch Duong immediately paled, nearly holding her breath.